I'm all checked in and I'm ready to fly. I'm at Melbourne Airport and I'm about to jump on board an Etihad Airways uh, 787 all the way from here, long haul flight to Abu Dhabi. I'm looking forward to this one. I haven't flown Etihad for a long, long time. And I know pre-COVID, they were undergoing a whole lot of cost cutting and pairing back on their business class service. So I'm really interested to see whether any of those bells and whistles have come back and what they're like in this uh, post-pandemic era. Uh, join me and we'll uh, fly to Abu Dhabi together. Let's go. Etihad uses the House Lounge in Melbourne. This lounge, like the one in Sydney, was originally designed and owned by Etihad, but they were sold off about five years ago and are now privately run. This one was very nicely laid out and had friendly staff. There was a bar as well as a small buffet selection of food. Business class passengers are also entitled to an a la carte dining option. This costs $20 per person extra for those entering the lounge using their priority pass. There were three courses but no choices. To start there was some very tasty French onion soup. This was followed by the risotto which was also delicious. I passed on dessert which was panna cotta. The best thing about this lounge though were the incredible views out across the airport. There was plenty to see including the very first Singapore Airlines A380 to fly back into Melbourne post Covid. And it's time to fly. That was a really nice lounge. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's go to Abu Dhabi. Love walking down the air bridge onto uh, the aircraft and ready for adventure. It's even better when it's all glass and you can see your ride sitting there ready to go. How cool is that? Hello. Hello, Hello. welcome on board. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Cheers. Here's to one sensational flight. This Qatar 777 was departing at the same time as us and was on its way to Doha. If you haven't seen my behind the scenes series at Qatar Airways, definitely check it out. I created a video on how they turn one of these 777s around between long haul flights and find out who does the dishes and who cleans the blankets. It's a fascinating process and I'll put the link to the video below. Today's flight will see us travel over 7,300 miles with almost 14 hours in the air as we fly from Melbourne, across Australia and out over the Indian Ocean, past Sri Lanka and India, towards the Gulf and eventually Abu Dhabi. Now that we're up in the air, let's have a look at this Etihad Business Class cabin, which is laid out in a 1-2-1 configuration so that all passengers have direct aisle access. Because half the seats face backwards, it's actually really difficult to film the cabin because I don't like filming other passengers. Therefore, most of this footage was taken once we had landed and the other passengers had disembarked. The best seats for couples wanting to be close are these seats in the middle which face forward. The backward facing middle seats are great for couples that need their distance. The seats on the side are great for single travellers. The forward facing seats are the even rows and they're the ones closer to the window. 
whilst the odd number rows are closer to the aisle and face backwards. Other than during takeoff or landing, it feels no different flying backwards. The seats themselves don't necessarily look comfortable, but at least for sitting, they really are. They can be adjusted using these simple controls or via this more comprehensive control panel, which also lets you manage the other aspects of your business class suite. Next to you is a handy flat surface to spread out your stuff while working. Here you'll also find the entertainment system remote and a couple of USB plugs. There is also a universal power point near the base of your seat. Storage wise you have this handy compartment next to you where you can find the headphones as well as a water bottle. The tray table is strong and sturdy and is designed to enable you to get out of your seat even when deployed. For these aisle seats there is a handy privacy divider so you don't have to make awkward eye contact with the person across the aisle. It does unfortunately take up half of the armrest though. I'll show you the seat in bed mode a little later on in the video. Just after takeoff, a drink and roasted nuts were served from the bar. I just went with some sparkling cloud juice as I had to get some work done. Whilst I enjoy my water and nuts, here's a look at the menus for today's flight. Etihad offers dining on demand in business class, which means you can eat whenever you want. This is brilliant for long haul travellers as you don't always feel like eating at set times. Because I was working, I delayed my meal until several hours into the flight. A couple of hours out of Melbourne, I noticed our friend, the Qatar 777, was flying just beside us. Eventually, it was time to eat. With dining on demand, you simply let the crew know about half an hour before you'd like to have your meal. I started with the Saku Tuna Tataki, which was fresh and full of flavour. For mains, I had the pan roasted Humpty Doo Barramundi with red Thai sauce jasmine rice and stir fried veggies. It was all cooked to perfection and again full of flavour. I followed this with a cheese platter and a top up of my Barossa Valley Shiraz. The cheese platter looked great but I thought it was interesting that they provided only two crackers for three very sizable pieces of cheese. Surely the cheese is the expensive bit of the dish rather than the crackers. It was not long after this that I discovered that my tray table was magnetic. Well at least this corner of it was. I assume it's to keep it in place when stowed. In a final piece of indulgence, I finished my meal with a delicious, soft, moist apple cake, which smelt and tasted divine. Let's have a look at Etihad's in-flight entertainment system. The system can be controlled with the remote and via the touch screen, which worked well. There were lots of viewing choices, including hundreds of movies, TV shows, and even live TV on offer. Music wise, the selection was just as broad. In-fly Wi-Fi was available, in theory at least. I went through the process of signing up and entering my payment details twice on two different devices, but each time got this error message. Unfortunately, my credit card was charged in both instances. This is annoying because I've now had to lodge a claim via the Etihad website to try and seek a refund. I'll let you know in the comments below how I go. Amenities wise, each business class passenger receives this stylish looking amenities kit upon boarding. It contains the usual suspects. Sadly, the Etihad in-flight PJs were a victim of cost cutting about 5 years ago, as were the mattress toppers. About 7 hours into the flight, it was time to get some sleep. Unfortunately, this was the most disappointing part of the Etihad experience. Whilst the bed is flat and has good width, I simply could not get comfortable. Part of the problem was the fact that the joint in the seat lined up perfectly with my hip, which meant lying on my back was the best option. That's when the second problem kicked in, because it turns out that both my legs are the same length. The footwell, whilst not as tight as some, is rounded on one side, which means you have one foot travelling in business class 
and the other foot on a low cost carrier. First world problems I know, but I've got to tell you like it is, so you know what you're getting. For reference, I'm 181 centimeters or just under six foot tall. I managed about six hours of very restless sleep. By the time I got up, we were about an hour out of Abu Dhabi, so there was no time for anything else from the menu. There was time for a nice espresso and a couple of cookies though. As we come into land, I'll reflect on the flight. On the positive side, the seat was comfortable to sit in and excellent if you need to get some work done. The food was delicious and the entertainment system comprehensive. On the negative side was the fact that the Wi-Fi didn't work but still charged me and the comfort level of the bed. Etihad, please bring back the mattress seat toppers. In terms of onboard service, I'd say this was neutral. The crew were friendly and efficient, but beyond the food and drink service, I never really saw them engage with any of the passengers. This may have been more noticeable for me though, because I'd had some really good crews on recent flights. Good evening and welcome to Abu Dhabi. The local time here is 11.30 p.m. Thank you for choosing to fly with Etihad Airways, the national airline of the UAE. It has been our pleasure taking care of you today. Thank you. So that was Etihad Airways. Overall, a nice flight. Uh, Etihad is certainly not what it was back in its glory days, but still offers a good solid business class product. Uh, if you've flown them, let me know in the uh, comments below what, uh, what your experience was like. Um, I'd certainly fly them again. Now, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and also check out my channel where there are a whole lot of uh, other flight reviews and a lot more really cool videos on the way. Uh, in the meantime, as always, happy travels.